do it. And welcome to the first ever Reborn podcast. My name is Nathaniel Shook, and uh, I'm the host of today's show. I also have Philip Shook. Uh, Philip Shook. What's up, man? What's up, man? Uh, we're excited to do this with us. So without, without further ado, let's, let's kind of go over uh, what we're going to be all about. Uh, the podcast. And we have an organization here. Uh, we're glad you guys are with us. Uh, hopefully when you guys see this, we'll be able to kind of sit down and relax. We're hoping to also have a uh, download list for you to kind of hear this uh, through like an MP3 format. Get out of service. You know, you know, you know, just need that download link and you'll be good. So, um, we'll, uh, don't allowed. No, don't put freaking loud. No, no, no. All right. Um, so for also for those who don't know, I'm also Shook. Uh, that's my gamer tag as well as uh, Philip over here is Doctor Phil Dr. with an F, Phil an F and one L, F and one L. <laughs> All right, so to kind of give us a kind of uh, brief overview on 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 what Reborn is, cause as probably you, uh, uh, most of you probably already kind of come to conclusion is what is this? Like, what is Reborn Gaming? Uh, why? what's up with the fancy like title screen, what's up with all of this stuff. Uh, so to kind of give you a rundown, uh, it's a nonprofit that I'm aiming to create, and we're, we're moving pretty close to that, uh, to actually making a legit nonprofit. Now, our mission for Reborn is to dynamically strive to, to create an environment of acceptance and confronting depression one button at a time. Uh, we envision an opportunity for people of all ages to find a place where they belong with healthy social interactions, for those who don't see themselves with any worth, that they are valued in life, not they're not a failure, and that the future is much brighter than how they view it now. By creating a place where people can recreation uh, can recreate recreationally, or competitively play video games and be a part of a team, league, or tournament, we can drastically change the way people confront new challenges, both socially and mentally. Video games have a way of bringing people together who are unlikely to engage with one another normally. To have and to have a healthy and genuine social and genuine social interactions, as well as improving on cognitive development. Uh, now, for the first time, uh, not only they, but we, uh, me and Philip, uh, can finally express ourselves and themselves uh, without the sense of being judged or isolated. Um, and so that's kind of that's kind of the whole point of of reborn, mm-hmm. kind of having that you know opportunity for someone who may not be able to. Um, what is it? Feel like they're like they're not a part of a team. They feel like they're a part of a team. Uh, kind of like what you went through, right? So, uh, kind of walk me through how you kind of got into the whole competitive thing. Just in okay, just yeah, like just, Smash. Yeah, just in general, yeah, like Smash. For um, all right. Well, I'll start off. I was running track at Mesa Community College, and one practice I was in practice and I tore my Achilles. So obviously you can't do much. You can't do track after that. So. Um, I was just chilling in rehab for for like, I don't know, five, six months. But I didn't start, like, pursuing any competitive smash until I was able to walk. So I must have been, like, six, seven months in. So I was still, like, going through recovery, but I was, like, at the end of it. But I decided I just wanted, like, some sort of competition in my life because I was always always in sports. Right, yeah. And I was unable to, so um, I was good at smash. I saw the smash doc. Uh, documentary, Oof. and that's kind of what like that's how I knew about it. Yeah. So I was like, well, and that was a great documentary too. That yeah, was fr- phenomenal. Yeah. I, I feel like a lot of people that's kind of you got into it, but right. And so I saw that, and I was like, well, I'm not doing anything right now. Might as well <laughs> yeah. keep competitive nature in there somehow. So I went and went to my first tournament in February 2015, I believe. Was it? Was it that? Was it that? Yeah, because I. Then? Yep. Oh. I think no. Wait, I. I don't remember. I'm not exactly sure, but I think that I think that's when it was. Yeah, okay. Because I was a year out, a year, like a year and two months when the game came out, because it came out in December 2014, if I remember right. Yeah, I think so. Wait, then no, fe- it was February 2016. That's what it is was then. It? Yep, hundred percent. So anyway, so that's when I joined <laughs> February 2016. Uh. Uh-huh. And uh, got my butt beat by a bunch of people, <laughs> and just kept going. And eventually, got pretty decent. Right. So so did you feel like? Because for me, like, I got into it when I stopped playing college tennis. Like, when that wasn't a thing anymore, ASU just cut their tennis program. Like, for me, that's the only real way that I could feel like... And granted, I don't, th- I don't think I was ever, like, on your level. I think we, me, we kind of both agree on that. Uh, 
But did, did it like sate that competitive atmosphere that you're looking for? Because I know mm. it, it's not anywhere close to an actual like football team, tennis team, soccer team, track team. But you have is the competitive like nature of it, or like, the feeling of it, kind of still the same a little bit. Well, okay. <laughs> or is it like vastly different because it's like a video? Nah, no, it's not. Like it's similar, but like obviously, when you love something as much as like right. I love track, yeah, that's yeah. like the thing, right? That, that's kind of the so, yeah. but. So it wasn't close to that, I wouldn't say, but it's like it's similar. Like you still, you're still playing against somebody, right? And like right. it's still like a head-to-head thing. And like when you get to like last stock, last hit, you still kind of get that little bit of adrenaline you're where you're like, you're stuff. like, yeah, like I could win, I could do it. And I think that's the nature of it being head-to-head. I think it's different when you're like playing online, like against right. somebody. But like when you're sitting right next to the person you're playing, <laughs> you shook hands beforehand. It's like you know, game, everything. You're both right there. Everyone's watching. Like it's different, you know. And oh, so yeah. you do, you do get that competitive edge in you a little bit. It's just not it's not the same as track, but it's comparable. I'll put it that way. All right. So. Yeah, I can kind of see that. Uh, yeah, and, and I'm 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 similar to like I would say they like bust my Achilles to to, <laughs> oh, like, yeah. to, 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 to actually go to get to that point. I think mine was a little bit more. What was it tamed? I want to say like it was I, more I it was more along. of a gradual. Yeah. yeah. It's more of a gradual. So I know for me, um, going into going into the whole smash thing, it was very gradual. Uh, I, in no way, shape, or form, wanted to be like the you know, gung ho smash guy. I always, I still wanted to play tennis, um, but not having that kind of competitive feel was very much similar to how you were feeling at the time. Granted, again, for different reasons entirely. Um, for me, it had me feeling like that competitive atmosphere, the sweat, like the anxiousness. Um, when we first started, though. It was ugly. Uh, it was really ugly. Uh, I so it's I everyone. actually yeah. So I actually me and Philip both started playing. Um, was it 3ds? 3d yeah the 3ds for for Smash Four. But I think oh. I think that all started really when we uh, look back at it. Oh. It was it was a conjunction of 64, my dude. 64. 64. Yeah. It was 64, and then we tried Project M, but we we're playing Project Sucked. M on an HD TV. Oh, so bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that, I think that's where it started, and then you, in conjunction with like the Smash documentary, which I think of, for most people that, that got was, us into it. Yeah, I think yeah. for most people that's well, where it. It's not even that it just. I mean, it got us into it, but it made us aware that it even existed. Right. I don't even yeah, know because yeah. before we had no idea. Yeah. Like, there's no. There's like oh geez, like all stuff. So like even like for me, go, when you go in the competitive scene, I know uh, for me specifically, uh, I made the gun. I would go like, oh, I want to make my own Smash League for our church. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just a group of friends because we had all uh, I think it was when Smash Four came out. Yeah. Went over to a Wii, friend's yeah. house. Yeah. Uh, Josh Deeds and we actually started playing Smash for a long time and we was like, oh, yeah. oh, we'd be there for hours. Oh, dude, like, all night. You you would hit up the QT. Uh, you up some taquitos. <laughs> get the taquitos. All night. Yeah. <laughs> and and just ha- I just you know dished out right there. Yeah. Um. It's and then time. when we started like, oh hey, we could do tournaments. Let's do some outreach events and stuff. And, and, and kind of you know go out the community at yeah. first like we thought oh dude this is gonna be a flop it's just gonna be a bunch of guys but I think I don't know I didn't think that no I, 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 I knew the people oh like, yeah well I mean, our first one was primarily different. primarily yeah. friends I yeah. didn't know them at that I didn't right. join the competitive community at that right point. And, and our first tournament this is where I started this is where I wasn't sure about the whole competitive scene yet I was still like oh this is kind of cool it's kind of fun to be competitive I didn't really grasp the nature of it until that first tournament it was yeah. a smash open at College mm-hmm. View. Uh, and we were expecting probably, at least me, I was expecting around 15 people. Roughly around 15. What's well, about? We had like what? 20 we had 20, something? we had like yeah. 25, 26. 20, something like that. Um, and then, well, we didn't know at the time though, there was a guy, um, by the gamer tag of Shiny. Shout his, out Shiny. Yeah, his, shout out Shiny. My man. My man. Uh, his real name's Alan. Great dude. If you ever see him, like, say hi, dude. He's super nice guy. He's easily one of the, the best, yeah. uh, he's guys. Cool. I've met in the Smash League. I agree. Um, hands down, like you can't argue that. It, uh, I don't think. Um, and what ended up happening was, uh, he was what PR five, I think. Eight. Eight. So he's on. He's yeah. like, he's on the PR list at number at number eight. But he's playing Jigglypuff. So regardless of what well, number you were, if you make a PR with Jigglypuff, you deserve it. Oh yeah. <laughs> that says I, something. Is there? Is has there been any other Jigglypuff that's made it in PR? No. Well, no, not in Arizona. No. All right. Well, but even still, that's no. Jigglypuff is widely considered one of the worst. I it's considered the worst character. Jigglypuff, yeah. Everyone, no. and, and, <laughs> most people would say. <laughs> well, and, and we'll get into this more. But I, he shows up here in, in our first tournament ever. He plays. He didn't even play. Puff I know. He, he played. No, he played Lucario. 
and Meta Knight. Meta Knight the, entire, the most. And Meta, he yeah, played Falco he a bit in the end. Wrecked us. But anyway, well, I think he play, didn't play. <laughs> oh, you know, he didn't. Yeah, because he didn't want to kill us too bad. Well, the, fir- <laughs> the first match was uh, him and his friend Emilio. Yeah. What was his or tag? Justice. It was, his justice, tag was Justice. Was. And they ended up playing our, our good friends, uh, Brett Pastor and Joshua Stevenson. First round <laughs> uh, was a Justice Goes Mario, his main. Yeah. And then that game, only the only the first uh, first round game, uh, did Shiny go Jigglypuff until he realized what was going down. Yeah. And you just hear, after the whole match, they, they lost like, what, two, uh, 3-0 or 2-0? I don't 2-0? remember. Pro- uh, I guarantee you they, did, they didn't take a game on no, it. No, it's yeah, so 2-0 because it's best of three. Uh, they come back to me to put in their score, and they're like, "Dude, Jigglypuff's ridiculous. Like <laughs> I've never seen it before." And like that was kind of the whole kind of thing of the tournament. One, uh, we didn't expect there to be anywhere near to be twenty five people. No. And then you have people coming from well, at least one guy from PR. There was a bunch and, of random. Yeah, people we had random too people. We had random people. Like literally uh, random guys. We had a guy show up from his workplace on a lunch break yeah. and said, I think I'm done for the day. No cars. He was, he was a mechanic. Yeah, he just came. And he shows up. He plays Zelda. It was kind of cool. It was great. I yeah. remember him. He's like, they say smash, I come running. That's what he said to me. I'm like, all right. Well. Um, he, played, uh, he played Zelda, Ganondorf, and Link. He was a, a Zelda fan. A Zelda, yeah, oh, easily. Which, hey, hey he, was, he got right. like fourth or something. Or, yeah, I think so. No, I got fourth. The- uh, yeah, Why yeah, did I get he, third? He finished below you because I think he, I yeah think he finished one spot below me. But I don't remember if I got two, fourth or I third. I think he beat. I think uh, Stout beat him. Maybe, but that's I don't know. Point. But he's pretty good. He's decent. Oh, yeah. So that was our time. that was our first competitive look in in, in the scene, and and for me it was like, oh geez, this is actually a real deal, and so it's not just what you see in the documentary with me- melee. There's more here. Yeah, it's there's it's always also someone Smash better 4. than you out there, right? And so. Yeah, what well, you said, there's always someone out there who's mm-hmm. better than you. And I think that would really open my eyes because before it was me, Philip, and I'd say at that time, Josh Dietz yeah. and Stout. Those are the four main. I think they still might be the four main guys, but I At least mean, from our group. The gap maybe, but... was huge. And I was playing Peach, thinking I'm like some gu- a Peach guru here. And or at, least, or at least I thought I was like intermediate level. Yeah, none of us were. N- n- yeah, we weren't even close. We were no. all beginners. Yes, we and were. And so we got. We were, we were noobs. Yeah, we got our face <laughs> beat in. And so. But that, but experiencing like those types of matches like against Shiny, both in singles and in doubles. I mean, I have to look back at the bracket, but seeing him play that was ridiculous. And we're seeing how far, like, oh, dude, there's a huge, there's a far more going on than than we originally thought, and that I got a lot to to really do. Hmm. And so that leads us to the second tournament, uh, and uh, that one had seventy people. Uh, yeah. Nine consoles. It was insane. Uh, had literally. We had a Project M set up in the corner. Yeah, they had a Project M set up. They had. They had a. Uh, we they had, had snacks, water. We, we had. We we had recording software. Right. We yeah, we actually had recording software. Not yeah. nearly as nice as what we have now. But it was I, still I was, there. It was still there. And we recorded. I still got something on my laptop that I haven't actually posted to YouTube, and people are like probably pissed at me for that one, but it's over with now. Um, it's but been that years. was that was probably the biggest wake up call for me. I just switched over to Mario. Um, and I felt like, so it's like I felt that kind of uh, that adrenaline rush that you were talking about. And I think that's what really like yeah. solidified it. Um, it. Happens every once in a while. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, which leads us to our next topic. When it comes to, um, I, I would say probably our favorite competitive game would easily is Smash. Well, yeah. I, I think hands down, there's. It's really uh, the only game I play competitive. Yeah. <laughs> but well, I mean, technically, I haven't gone in a, to a tournament in a while. Right. But, you know, you but, don't but know, even you still, like you, you can lock on to SAK Gaming. Shout out to SAK. They're legit. They're way yeah. better than anything we got going on. But they're <laughs> they they are legit. Probably the top uh, yeah. guys out here for Smash in Arizona. Yeah. Probably if they if they branched out more, they'd probably be a lot. They've, uh, more. they've done some things with the uh, esports arena. Yeah. And down mm-hmm. in uh, Talking Stick, I think it's called esports arena. I don't remember exactly, but I think so. they've met, they've kind of. Done things with other companies here and there. Right, they did right. like some ASU tournaments too. They did. Those guys it was that actually did really uh, nice. E League, I think. Yeah. Uh huh. And yeah. then we also they also had the one at uh, Chase Field. Oh, that that was just then though. They had a I deal. Know. And they but yeah. it, but yet to me it was kind of cool. Yeah. Had, uh, Jumbotron. Like, so that, dope. The fact that that was actually I don't on know how they made that during possible. during a game. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's ridiculous. But I mean that leads us to our next question: Is uh, probably like specifically Smash? Is is if I want to get in the competitive. Um, Kind of the competitive field or the scene, like what steps do I kind of have to take? And since we're gonna, 
we'll probably elaborate on Smash. And I mean, that's again our, that's our all favorite I really ones. Know, that's yeah. all you know. Yeah, uh, I know a, a very minimal, minimal, minimal Mario Kart, if anything at all. I watched YouTube. That's uh, that's besides the point. So, um, I mean, there's one of two ways you can go about this um, with Smash. I mean, realistically, <laughs> um, it's it's I, like for us, it was very much a uh, we watched the Smash documentary and then like, oh, dude. I remember immediately after we were like, let's play 64. Yeah, right let's now. play 64. At, we, we would go back on this TV here and we would just play 64 for like, what, three, four hours every night almost? Yeah, we were playing a lot. Yeah, and, and so, but what was hard was after seeing the documentary, getting jazzed about it and seeing probably what, one or two tournaments, uh, probably Evo and then probably Genesis right now. No, a- Apex and Evo. Apex was my first like yeah. big tournament. Was I it Apex? Apex 2015. 2015, yeah. Uh, I think that was the one that kind of because we had just watched the documentary. We, then we're watching Apex, yeah. and we're like, "This is what it is." The one when they got snowed in and yeah. PPMD one. Yeah. Oh, dude, so great! But, but I mean, but after watching that, like for me, it was like, okay, what character do I play? Yeah. Like, like what? What's my first step in the competitive scene? Like, uh-huh. what do I need to do? Because again, like I, I'm, I, we've shared this before, like just to ourselves. I mean, there's, I feel like there's two, uh, one or two ways that you can go about it. It's like, okay, I need to look at everything that's going on in this like stream or this tournament, look at the meta game and say, okay, this is what's popular. This is what people see. This is what, how fast they're reacting. This is all of this. And so I need to find a character that can match that meta. But at the same time, when you pick that, so for smash four purposes, like, Oh man, dude, I freaking watch zero. I'm going to play freaking chic because it's the meta. And so you pick chic, mm-hmm. but I don't uh, really play Sheik anymore, but you know, well, back yeah. in the day, yeah. But uh, back in the day when it was broken, like you go up to a tournament though, and you would just like, everything you saw on YouTube or the stream out the window, just get it out. You're not going to see see that, and, and I think the problem is you're you're going to see you have pro level, and then you have beginner level, and I think a mistake that most people do when they get pumped up, especially I would say with competitive people like me and you who have been in the sport who want to jump in right there, our first initial reaction is like. I need to find the best character in the game and abuse it. And then, but when we're put in the situation though, where the pros aren't even in there, <laughs> it just goes to cry out the window. And then the the last thing that someone can take with their beginner is just play their favorite characters and just play that thing and uh, like ignorance is bliss type deal. Yeah. Where they're not really over like they're not uh, they're not aware of the situation. So for you, what what would you suggest be like the proper way to go about just like picking a character and. And kind of getting into the game because I feel like again, in a competitive sense, like yeah, in, in a competitive because I feel like that's a really, really hard, to, a really hard thing to get into right out the gate. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, first off, I think you need to assess your own goals and what you want to accomplish. So, if you, if you want, like, say you, if you want to do the best you possibly can and have your performance be as best you possibly can, then that's going to affect your character choice. But if you just want to do better than you are, or right, you want right. to do just have fun or something like that, like. Mm-hmm then that'll affect your goal. Because if you want to do the best you can possibly do, I mean, you're going to have to look at the better characters. You're going right. to have to like right, right. kind of look at those characters and take those seriously. And, you know, maybe if you like Bowser Jr., that might not matter because he's horrible. Shout right? out to Tyler Flam. Yeah. For well. sticking it out. And so, but, but here's the thing. Like, that's the thing is Tyler was never like, I want to go to tournaments and win everything. No, right? and that's a good point. And so when he picked Bowser Jr., that was what he was comfortable with. That's fine. Go. Yeah. So, I mean, it... it when you first start out just playing a bunch of characters, like, I know for me, when I, I started playing on 3DS Diddy and Marth, those were, like, right. the first two. Right. And those are the ones that just initially, like, felt good to me. Yeah. They felt right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, when you need to find that feeling, I feel like. Yeah. And you go, that's when you, that's how you start. You go from there. Well, so, it, you just, you just play. At the beginning, you're, we're, no matter what character you play, you're going to be bad. Like, that's right. how we all yeah, were. that's how it is. So, you just got yeah, just play around and find a character that you're like, oh, I like how this feels. It fits me. Right, right, right. Like, I know, for example, bring up Shiny again. He told me, like, he didn't pick Jigglypuff because, like, he liked Jigglypuff or anything. He said when he first started playing, like, he would just always win with her. And he was just yeah. like, well, I guess I'm playing Jigglypuff. <laughs> and so... That's that's wild to think, though. Yeah. Anyways. And so, so there's, like, there's... You have to just find what character fits you. And then as you get... That's at the beginner level. I think you just need to find the character that is more comfortable with you. Yeah. As you get better, you'll start to assess whether or not, like, if you felt comfortable with, I don't know, uh, Robin. Maybe you might want to change because yeah. now no, you got fundamentals point, yeah. down. Maybe you want to go to a better character with better tools. Right. So. Right. Um, 
Luckily for me, when I chose Diddy, it just kind of worked. <laughs> it just kind of worked. Kinda he's, worked. A good, he's a good character. Yeah, I w- I would say for me, um, like I I made the mistake of jumping into like the meta, like what's what's good. I know I was yeah. playing uh, was Peach, but I was quick to to pick. Oh, dude, Mark's got a tip. I should just go right in there. Or I should play. Well, I mean, that's what me too. That's yeah. why I like. Well, and even when I was Mark's having... my favorite Smash character. Right. So. Well, yeah. But even like when I had like the character crisis at, I mean, you know what I was talking about, where I like yeah. I'm gonna get Everywhere. chic. I want to. I'm gonna pick this character. Bowser, Sheik, that, Yoshi, Peach, everything. Mario. I, it was. It was bad. Um, <laughs> and I. I think me uh, as a, as a beginner, I made the mistake of not identifying, or being aware of, uh, who the playstyle that I was more, mm-hmm. uh, attuned to. I think. Uh, it, so I took kind of this weird alternate route, the scenic route, per se. Um, I would say probably now uh, to to your thing like what what Shiny was saying that you that you brought up is I just I was winning with Jigglypuff and so I kind of just roll with it. I would mm-hmm. say the same is probably, um, I mean it's probably true in this case if you're starting out play the character you want, mm-hmm. but also kind of be aware of, uh, of the situation when you play. Understand okay this is why my character isn't good against this. This is why I'm having difficulties with this and all this stuff because I feel. At a certain point, if you're not aware of your surroundings, especially if you're playing, like, if I'm, if my favorite, I would say my favorite character in Smash, oof. We'll say if I wanted to play Roy. We'll just say we, well, Roy's our boy. Let's yep. go with that. That's my favorite character. Right, yeah. yeah. But Look. not my favorite. He's my favorite character in Smash, but not my favorite Smash character. Right. That makes sense. But yeah. if you're playing <laughs> Roy and you really want to, um, you want to main him and you want to take him competitively, I feel like after every match you do, like to obviously take him to tournaments, don't be scared to take him to tournaments just because it's not a meta character. Yeah. I mean, it's Smash 4 for crying out loud. It's Smash Bros. It's meant to be fun. When you're starting out, character choice yeah. is never your problem. Yeah, You've exactly. got much more problems exactly. than your character Exa- choice. Exactly. And I, and, I, and I feel like um, you, you take it to the tournament, you, you play a game, you play a match, and you start to learn. It's, it's a process. And I feel like yeah. a lot of times that patience... Uh, learning yep. learning that character it just isn't there for most. It wasn't there for me. And honestly, like I, it just was. You can choose a top tier at the beginning and almost be like babied a little bit. Oh and, yeah. Like oh, yeah. honestly, if if you stick with it and you're a quick uh, quick learner, but you can learn good from your mistakes. Playing a bottom tier might actually even be beneficial. Be better, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. Because you learn how to play neutral better. You learn yeah, like because you have to. You can't dive in yeah. as much. Like I know Diddy. Like sometimes I was so like babied from his good moves and right. i was like oh fair beats everything <laughs> right and right, i'm just right. like fairing shields and then like it, for no reason people are right. grabbing me and i'm like why isn't it winning like huh. well maybe you shouldn't do it like yeah you gotta think more so i mean it, it's more of just taking a character and learning the character and the move set so that you can properly learn how to play just smash the game like right. just learn how to play right, smash right. itself so so uh, you would say as as a beginner who's like, learn a character learn, that learn you feel character. comfortable with. That's, how, how should you view the competitive scene? Like, should you freak out about it, or like, how uh, going into a tournament? Like, what should your mentality be? So, do you mean going into like a normal competitive tournament? Like, yeah. S- so, S- like, I, I, I picked my character. But do I you mean to take a tournament? Yeah, but what what kind of tournament are we talking here? Like ones we do, or like the ones? No, I would like say SAK? I would say outside. I would say outside of Reborn. Like, okay. So, like, if you were going to like an SAK, an like a normal one, competitive yeah, exactly, tournament. Yeah, yeah. Know that it is very likely that you'll go zero and two. <laughs> Get that donut, that sweet, and, sweet donut. And ju- you <laughs> just have to accept it. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, at gonna, the beginning, gonna... what you go to tournaments for isn't necessarily like it is the actual tournament, right? But it's also the people you meet and the connections right. and the friendlies you get, right? Because for, that's the point. I told people all the time. I always see beginners. They come for a right. tournament, go zero and two, and then leave. And I'm like, dude, what are you? I always think like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like this is when you get better. Yeah, like, you have to. When stay. I first started coming. <laughs> Doing the friendlies and stuff, that's when I spiked the most because I'm playing yeah. people that are like better, like telling me things, yeah. like I understand more. And so, like, just going, oh, and playing your tournament matches and leaving, that's the biggest mistake you can make. Yeah, no, if, I, you, I if you really want to get better, I would agree. So, um, and then, oh, and then and again, that kind of goes back to what we're talking about with like who we are as an organization, Reborn, is that, um, it, it's a what you would say it's kind of this huge. Uh, was it learning? Uh, what's it called? Learning curve. Learning. Yeah, it's <laughs> duh. So it's a. I would say it's a big learning curve. If you're not, you, if you're not ready for Very it. Very much so. It's frustrating. Uh, it, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you'll hit a wall, and you're like, "Why am I hitting this wall?" And, well, and also, I think a lot, like a lot of people, have this notion that like, I'm, I'm decent in my head. Yeah. But it's like you yeah. kind of have to throw that out. 
I'm like, the best in my friend group. Like, yeah, you're not good. Me, me and my boys are going to get wrecked. Like, no, I wasn't good when I first started. <laughs> I Honestly, I'm not even that good now. Like, if, if yeah. people, no, I can see There that, are some yeah. people who, like, play me and they're like, oh, my God, he's so good. But then right. if you went, if I went there, you'd see I'm I'm just middle fish in the right. middle of the sea, like, with all these people <laughs> that are so much better than right. me. And I think the mentality, especially for a beginner going into it, is, <sighs> is you have to have the mentality that I am going to lose and it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Because... Yep. Your whole point is to practice, train, and get better. And, and and folks, let me let me just like paint you a picture. Uh, when you even when you go to the tournaments and you find you find a guy in PR, it it's he's not pro level. He's mm, I mean occasionally depends yeah occasionally I, I think I think um because and going even he more, could be he's he could be likely no, that's not. true. Um, but like even like when you're picking your character and you're trying to formulate your, your play style, and it's very easy to go into a tournament saying I've seen pro guys on stream. And saying like I, I I feel like I'm close to that. They're pros. There's no way they're gonna. Uh, I I I should I should you know form my game around what I'm seeing on stream because I'm gonna see that in locals. Well, when when in fact I would say it's not entirely that you're gonna find amateur and semi pro players here because you're yeah. gonna see a lot of people in the state. There's everyone. That, yeah, there's everyone. And so realistically, when when me and Phil talk about this, uh, I we've talked about this before actually a long time ago, even even recently. Is that our level? I'm very much an intermediate. I'm riding the fence between in, intermediate and amateur, whereas I would say Phillips amateur, and that's mm-hmm. below semi-pro and pro. Um, and so, and that might not. Oh, like, oh, that you're not that far off. Yeah, no, it's a drastic. It's the a higher drastic up you go, thing. the steeper the curve goes. The, the amateur to and semi-pro. And the more time you got to put in. Right. The amateur level to semi-pro level is. A cesspool it, it, of randomness it, where you it's just immense. fluctuate. Right. And so. What you see in the beginners, like in regards to characters being played, is probably going to follow over a little bit, not not that much, but enough to where it's noticeable to pick out stuff. Which finally leads us to this topic, okay? Characters to look out for when you are playing Smash and you're starting off competitively. What is the tier list? So we're going to actually pull up <laughs> the tier list for Smash because I'll be real honest with you, it's a little weird, and most people who get in Smash are like, oh well. Pfft. Diddy sucks. He just has a banana. Like, what the heck? Or Sheik's light and she gets carried away. Like, these are things I've heard. Like, so for instance, you also have on this tier list, um, uh, where is it? Mega Man. Oh, he he's he's garbage. I can't do combos. He's not really good. He doesn't have a lot of power. Or or Peach. I've I've heard that so many times. Peach isn't a good character. She's not high tier. She's light. She gets killed easily. I mean, she's kind of in the middle. She's not great. But no, she's yeah, not horrible. But but yeah. see, that's that's kind of mentality that you have. You have this official Smashboards Wii U tier list, and you're just not you're just not going to see a lot of that starting out. And I think a lot of the I think this tier list changes drastically for beginners. And what sucks is they really don't have a tier list for uh, for beginners. So what we're going to discuss and very briefly uh, before our program ends is is kind of just talk about what is this tier list for beginners and characters to watch out for. So, without further ado, uh, Phil, do you have that pop pulled up on? I friend? don't. I'm trying uh, to find the right one. No, that's okay. So, for, I'll go. I'll go first because I feel like this. I feel like when you look at beginner beginners, there's gonna be a lot of heavies. You, 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 All you right, say? I have it. You have it. Okay. So, what would be your? What would be some characters you you personally would like watch out for and why? So, do you mean so a beginner going to a normal tournament or just it? Just in general, like yeah, going to a normal tournament or even like uh like tournaments like that we host that is very are, beginner are, friendly. Okay, and are you talking like beginner like a beginner's playing kind of a beginner as well, or he's right, playing exactly. somebody? Yeah. You're, okay, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I'd say a character that drops off drastically is Sheik. Uh, yeah. Beginners, you yeah. will not see them playing Sheik optimally, and she's honestly not that great because you have to yeah. have a very good understanding of Smash Four right. like combo game in order right. for her mm-hmm. to work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's not a character people struggle with much. Um, honestly, it's, I always heard people call heavy characters noob killers. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Because the, when you're new, you get hit by a lot of stuff. Oh, you you're not good at power shielding. Stuff. You're not good at like, you know, you just get hit by a lot of stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so when you're a heavy character, sometimes you get hit at 80% <laughs> by a full charge because you did something dumb. Yeah. Oh right? yeah. And so heavy characters kind of seem to be a struggle for newer people and I'd say sometimes even worse. So heavy characters and projectile based yeah, characters. Yeah, I was like, gonna say projectiles is probably Samus worse. Yeah. is. Uh, I see uh, lots of people. Link, <sighs> Link. Everyone I know people hate Link as beginners. I, I even can't stand Toon Link. Link. Um, like I said, more heavies like Bowser. Right. Even DK 
can well, I won't be. say Charizard. I mean, yeah. if, if you get rage on yeah. that thing, it's going to get really annoying. And it's like, yeah, I know. So it's it's hard. He, he, honestly, even Little Mac, honestly, because he's got, <laughs> because he's got he, they don't understand like it's even me like back then it's hard to understand like what you need to do to beat him. Yeah. And when he's on stage, like beginners most of the time want to approach immediately. They want to just go and attack. Right. 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 Like I struggle with that still. And the thing about Little Mac is he's got super armor on half of his moves on the ground. <laughs> so, so even cool. if you go to hit them, so they're cool. gonna hit through you and kill you. <laughs> Yeah, no. He's got frame like a frame two jab, frame one jab, or something well, like that. Well, I mean, have you like, seen the down tilt of Bowser and DK? Yeah. Like the, the amount of damage output for those alone. Even is... like Ganondorf and King Dedede, they're oh, in, they're in F tier, right? I know, the I know, they're list. horrible. But, but they're people good. struggle. People in in a newer player match, people struggle yeah. against those heavies. Yeah, and, and it's important to be looking out for heavy characters, not as a oh I should pick these characters, but in a way that be on the lookout for how they play. Be wary not to just charge in. Right, exactly. Because one thing that's how you get killed <laughs> every time. I mean, it's so frustrating too. Me and Philip, as we've learned, you have to have you have to have a balance of gameplay. It's not all offense. It's not all, yes. all defense. Because in the beginners, beginners don't care. They're just they're gonna, just they're gonna throw stuff out. Yeah, they're just gonna throw stuff out. And so if you're getting in, getting it, getting into competitive smash, you need to be aware that this tier list you see is not necessarily is just not what you're gonna see. Right. I would say more beginning. heavies and more projectile people are going to be in that S, A, and B tier that you see on screen because re- realistically, it, it's hard for a beginner who doesn't know the game mechanics to deal with a plasma shot coming right at your face that takes up yeah. half the stage that it's you're like, on. D- don't feel bad if you get right. destroyed yeah. by a Ganondorf even though he's in F tier. Yeah. Like, I got beat by everything under the sun. Like, right. And <laughs> I would say probably I, the most important thing for a beginner playing a heavy character or projectile, be patient and just be watchful be mindful of what's going on because understanding how these heavy and projectile characters work is going to help you mm-hmm. move up in the ladder exponentially yeah Expo- i mean granted it, you do have to practice it's the fingers and all that stuff yeah but understanding game elements and mechanics will far uh, the benefits will far outweigh anything yeah. else and if you yeah. don't get uh, that's if you the don't first thing you should start oh with. yeah so like for me i would say a big one, at least in reborn tournaments, uh, for again, because we're we're trying to get people, uh, include people in the in the, uh, was it, competitive scene. A big one that people really struggle with, Samus and Link. Yeah, those two really. It's it's really bad. I can't. And part of it has to do with like Link has got so many different kinds of projectiles, and then Samus's like role is kind of right. I mean, it's not not that it's a role is good, but right. it, like. It, it lingers a little bit, yeah, and, and you don't know what to do. People it's and people ball. who don't know how to like do the timing of like grabbing them right out of a right. roll or something. Right, 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 right. They're like, what, what the heck do I do? They just don't know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> well, this guy's just rolling in a little ball back and forth with a full charge shot. So like, yeah. I, and I get it because I've been there. So, so how would you go about playing against a Samus or a Link it, j- j- yourself, not as beginner, <laughs> but as yourself? Okay. Like, like, what would you, what, 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 where are the Assuming thoughts? I, like a one v one, like yeah, uh-huh. oh, yeah. Well, whenever. I mean, whenever they do the little roll thing, I usually just, <laughs> I know they're going to roll away from me. That's the a tendency of beginners is to roll away yeah, when they, yeah. when, when like, they're like, well, I don't know what's going on. Go away. And so I usually just side B at them. And so my, the kick, the oh, diddy's diddy, side yeah. B, it ends up hitting so, but, uh, Or I wait and I just grab them out yeah. of it or something. But as a beginner, should you do those, like, if they're rolling back, like, oh, and it's working on it, should you do the same thing in return? roll back or mm. is there a way that you should view that and be like, okay, maybe I shouldn't roll too much or get into certain traps about using a certain move all too often. I mean, the short answer, I, the short answer is in the long term, you shouldn't <laughs> Yeah, I was say, <laughs> because like, ah! you'll start creating bad habits. Yeah. But uh-huh. at the same time, like I, I realize that people who are beginners, like if I explain to them, Oh, just side B and time it. So that yeah. it hits them. It's like yeah. they might not be able to do that. Right, like they might not be able to time it as well. Like I know I wasn't able to. Yeah. And so, like, if you find something that works against them, abuse it. Just win the match, yeah. man. Like I would say, as a beginner, just to kind of abuse it. Um, I I would say as you're going, you gotta have you have to pick up on the patterns. Like right. The thing about those those kinds of people when they play, they do play in a pattern, and right. like it's it's pretty easily distinguishable. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so if you can pick up on that as a beginner, you can be like, oh, he's gonna roll this way again, yeah. and you can take advantage of that. Yeah. And I think so, the yeah. <laughs> I think I think also a big issue is um, oh man I had the train of thought is don't I if you don't be predictable if that makes sense 
don't fall in the situation where you're constantly, be conscious you're, of what you're doing. Be conscious of what you're doing because, <laughs> uh, and and you spoke of the patterns. It's not every Samus isn't going to do the same thing. Every every link isn't going to do the same thing. Yeah. Now there will be certain elements of their gameplay that will be very similar. Like the projectile game is going to be very similar, but how they move and stuff is very different. So not yeah. only and this is a, this is. This is this really confused me a lot. Go, I uh, growing up even with sixty four is not only are you playing the character and it's and it's attributes and skills, you're playing the person. Yeah. And I think that's why I like Smash mm. probably as a competitive game uh, more than most games. Everyone's that got their own style. Exactly. Me and Philip are very much a rush down in your face. I want you to panic type of mentality. Mm, it's true. all offense, very little defense, um, and it takes us a little bit of time to play that defensive game. And you'll see it kind of switch. But a lot of beginners get in this situation like a uh, I got ooh Captain Falcon esque type of mentality. Yeah. Just spam that Just B go. button, Falcon punch it all day or that side B, and eventually it'll hit. But if someone, but but if you're aware of that person or, or if, the, if your opponent's aware of what you're doing, it's gonna get torn to shreds. It's funny, like the bad part about all that is like at a low level that might actually work. Yeah, you know, you're right, yeah. And it's like, it's sick, because it like, it reinforces that behavior, and then you play somebody who knows what they're doing, and it's like, right. my whole game plan is crashing. <laughs> right. And I think, this, I think this goes to what me and you were talking about, and I think Hugs brought this up, is that every move you make should be intentional and should have a purpose yep. to why you're doing it. If you, if you do a move, like, for example, like, if I if I yeah, if I ever played a, like a game on stream at SAK, right, yeah. I'd go watch like my stream, and if like, if I were to like, pick out a move where I got punished and I like you ask yourself like why did I do that move yeah. and you can't come uh, up with an answer uh -huh. then why maybe you, you should not do <laughs> yeah, that maybe you should like, do that <laughs> well and, and we've even seen in other like tournaments whether it's from a, a, a tournament we've hosted or even tournaments that we've seen on stream whether it be at a pro level or our local level a state level is that uh, I think a big one is psyche psyche in Arizona this this guy's psyche are you oh talking about just gosh. the pro people like the best of the best in Arizona. Well, I'm I'm talking about yeah. I think Psyche's a good example of this to a certain yeah. degree. Is that I think there's like three or four people yeah. who are. Up oh yeah, there. that are at his level. Have made semi -pro. national, like yeah, semi pro level talking. It, yeah, Psyche has a way of manipulating you into doing certain things where it makes you feel like you're really wrecking them. But he wants you to hit him because he's yeah. putting he's putting himself Dude, and you in a situation that you won't be able to. He get conditions out of. you like so you'll start doing something like you'll hit him a few times and you're thinking like oh I'm doing something good yeah but he's so, making oh, you yeah. think like he's making you want to do that more right, right and right. so you go to do like the thing that hit him last time and he's like oh perfect and does this little right thirty five percent combo and on like, you and then I now do? you're <laughs> in an edge guard situation <laughs> and you're like what just happened. Right. We were like tied percentage, and now I'm off stage, about to die. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, and, and and the reason why I bring this up is because going back to every move has to have a purpose. Even in the instance of you getting hit, there's always a reason why you're air dodging. There's a reason why you're di diing a certain way. Yeah. There's a reason why you want to bait him in and hit you because there might be a point where hey, he runs out of jumps, and you have an opp opportunity to capitalize. Or there might be a move he mm -hmm. throws out that you're able to dodge, or that he throws out hits you, but maybe he has a, a, a long end lag. The movement, so it puts you in a, in a situation where you have the advantage. And so, um, as a beginner, always be mindful of, of what you're doing. Don't try to fall into patterns, and just honestly be aware of, of just your surroundings. Every move has to have a purpose. And as mm. a beginner, I think that's the biggest thing. Even for, even for pro player, players yeah, right now, it's that's the still thing. something they should live by. You're right. That every move you make has to have a purpose because if it doesn't, you're gonna get you're, the consequences are gonna be probably severe. I think a good way to think, you up you go. I think a good way to think of it is that every move you make has a pro and a con to it. And when you like relook at a set or something, if the con cons horribly outweigh yeah. the pros like say you're playing link and there's a guy in the air and you go for an up b to hit him right yeah it's like well you might be able to hit him yeah but if you but don't if you don't he gets a free combo on you yeah, so it's, it's does it really hits. is it really worth it right and you start to learn those things as you play more so right and i think as a beginner especially against like again those sandwiches and those links is being patient and understanding what the opponent's doing in your, your surroundings will help because uh, if you don't, f they're going to fall into some habits. At least what I've seen is they fall into habits to where now, okay, maybe maybe there's certain things i got to do. Maybe I can take this hit and keep going. Uh, play patiently, uh, especially with the sandwich. You know they're going to roll, so instead of charging, just going all in or pressing side B or just neutral B all the time where he rolls around, 
understand that he's conditioning he's conditioning himself to hmm. roll every time when there's when there's an attack thrown out. So maybe run up to him, fit, just stay put. He rolls back, and you know what he's going to do now. Yeah. Especially with like a falcon who's got the elbow reach or a marth. Whereas if you run up to a certain distance and he rolls back away from you, it's going to be a perfect range to either get tipped or or forward smashed. Yeah. And so it, uh, you have For to sure. be aware of what's going on at all times. And as a beginner, be mindful. You're not going to win a lot. And that you just got to be aware of your surroundings. It's like, that's if you, a big thing. like if you start getting frustrated with Samus is rolling, instead of letting him get frustrated, use that knowledge. Like, yeah. you know, he's going to roll. Right. Yeah. So use that to your advantage, yeah. you know, and, and that, I, that's actually a blessing in disguise. Oh, honestly. yeah. And, and, and it's very, it's very much the same. How, like I used to play tennis uh, where, and the coach would always say, let the other person make the mistake. Yeah. And I, I think that's, that's a true. big thing, especially with the Samus. If he's charging, yes, it's very intimidating. Yes, he can kill you at certain percentages a lot earlier than most, but mm -hmm. he's got to make that shot. He's got to press that button. And so if you keep charging him and making those mistakes and having those horrible consequences, yeah, it's, he's going to pick you off. It's true. And so having the ability to both play offense and playing up in your face, but also having the patience and awareness to sit back and play defensively is huge. <clears throat> cool. Sure. So that will be our first ever podcast. We're, we're excited you guys kind of uh, stayed in. Our next one, we'll, we'll be going over Mario Kart kind of the different classes and stuff. And uh, also, shout out to Kristen Challenge. We're having a tournament January 5th yep. on a Friday, I believe at 1 p.m.? I'm not like exactly sure, but... I think so. Uh, there we'll, we'll be able to kind of... Uh, we'll play some Smash. We'll play some uh, Mario Kart. So if you guys are listening in right now, uh, make sure to sign up for that. It's on the Facebook. Uh, the link will be in the description. Uh, we encourage you guys to be a part of that. But... Before we go, before we close out, we have our lovely <laughs> Captain Toad's Weekly Picks. Let's go. This is the game where we draft our own characters or players or whatnot to see who has the best team. It's a competition between me and Philip, and you guys will be able to look at our teams afterwards uh, and post who would win or who has the best one. And then at the end of the week, we'll be able to decide who is the winner. By the next upload, we will as well. So the weekly is this weekly uh, picks is very tentative. Uh, so with that being said, this this week's uh, Captain Toad's picks is going to be lovely legendary Pokemon. All right, where we are going to pick, you know who. The legendary Pokemons could be anything, it could both be on a competitive basis, looks, it could be how cool they are, uh, kind of the lore behind it, it could be anything. And so that's why we kind of want to leave it up in the air for people to, you know, vote on. I mean, because you might not be uh, in Pokemon uh, competitively, but you might love stinking Shaman, and you might think Shaman is the best legendary Pokemon of all time. And so if Philip drafts Shaman, which he totally should with his first pick, <laughs> Then, right. then I'm going to give him all the points, and he wins. All right, so we're going to, since Philip was so kind to join me in this podcast, we'll actually give him, give him the first pick of this one. So Philip shook. The rules are simple. We It's, it's not Snake. We take turns, okay. okay? We have a total of five picks. It's Legendary Pokemon from all over. Uh, no Ultra Beasts as the new one. Uh, you can catch multiple Ultra Beasts, so we're not going to go that route. We will include include Necrozma. Uh, Sogaleo, and I forgot the last one. Lunala. Lunala. And it's pre-evolutions, <laughs> even though they're Ultra Beasts, but they're not. It's kind of a weird, funky thing. So without further ado, Philip, the first pick. So any legendary. Any legendary <laughs> at all. Doesn't It's not uber tier. It's just it, you're combining anything. everything. Anything at all. Give me that Rayquaza. You're getting Rayquaza. So Philip's going with the, ooh, that's a great pick. Yeah. Now why 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 Rayquaza, dude? Dragon Ascent, boy. <laughs> you, you know. He got. He's the only Pokemon in history to get banned from Uber Tier. Banned from Uber Tier. That's why. I think my I spelled the Quaza wrong. We're gonna check this out. R A Y Q U A. R A Y Q U A. Q U A Z A. Okay. Or I guarantee, like Rayquaza. <laughs> I actually think that's how you're supposed to pronounce it, but I don't care. Quaza. Yeah. That's what's up. So. Yeah, that, wow. that's definitely my first pick. You're gonna go with that. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, wow, that's a really good pick. Dang it. Um, let's see here. If I, I, thought, I thought it was the obvious. The obvious. <laughs> yeah. Well, unfortunately, you missed. Uh, you know. I don't know. Freaking... I already know what I'm picking next. <laughs> oh, ooh, he already knows what he's picking. I'm already next. ready, boy. You're already ready, boy. Um, oh, there's so many good Pokemon here that you can pick and it'd be phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, 
I have to, I have to be the fangirl in this one. I have to. Uh, sign me up for Lugia. Let's go. Uh, Lugia, dude, he's like... Easily the coolest one besides Rayquaza. I think Rayquaza is easily like the coolest legendary. But have you seen Lugia? Like easily, easily the greatest legendary. Lugia is. is pretty cool. Lugia I is great. I probably would have picked him later on. Lugia is great, but Lugia he was definitely great. in my memory bank. Do you think, up there. Do you think Lugia stands a chance to to no. no, no, the Hyper Beam. Yeah, I, I probably have to Hyper Beam Dragon Ascent. <laughs> <laughs> Dead. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't All know. Right. I don't know. Actually, he might because I know Lugia can learn Ice Beam, and that would pretty okay. much wreck Rayquaza. So I don't know. Rayquaza would probably still win because he's just really good. if he is like the Mega Form or whatever. Yeah, if we're, if we're going that route. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. All right, give, give me your give me your second pick. Boy. All right, Blah. second pick. We're going back to the oh, beginning. No. You're gonna you're gonna do it to me, aren't you? Mewtwo, baby. Oh, he did it. <laughs> no, baby. I wanted that so bad. I got I got two different. Um, because technically Rayquaza doesn't count as a Mega Evolution because it's not. A mega ring, so right. he can you can put Dragonstone on him and he'll turn into his like mega form. Right. And so I also have the option of doing Mega Mewtwo Y or X, so it's kind of cool. I can get like a fighting type out of him, you know. So I thought, and he's just an all around good Pokemon. So. Yeah. No, you're you you're, you're right. Yeah. I gotta I gotta find something to really. Like I want to pick this one guy, but I'm just not sure. And, and by the way, we both have lists on our phone right now. Oh, yeah. Fl we're flipping through it because there's so much. There's it's a not lot. Even, it's not even worth it at, at some points. Um, oh, man. That's actually I think I already know what I'm doing next, too. <laughs> I think. Oh, it's it depends so on what hard. you pick. It's but... so hard. <clears throat> really depends. All right. Going back to Gen 2. Okay, okay. Phil, oh. Phil feels in his gut. He's going ho. No. Suicune. I'm going Suicune. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm going Suicune. Right. Uh, I rem or or as I used to call it when I was little, Suicune. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to get Suicune. I don't know how you got that out of that. Suicune. Suicune. Oh, my gosh. Um, I got to figure out because it's a weird way to uh, spell it. But So so you have – who do you I, have so far? I, I have Lugia and Suicune. Those are your two right now? Those are my baller ones, okay. baller status guys. Okay. That are like legit and better than yours at all points, um, because it's okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. Um, what you got, mate? What's Xerneas, your, what, what baby? You, what? Xerneas. Xerneas. What? Xerneas. Get out of here! Oh, oh yeah, are we talking about making like a, a competitive? Like, is only competitive? No, this is everything. Everything. Okay, everything. Okay, Come never, on, man. Never mind then. I'm about to say, you're gonna pull that crap. Never mind then. Yeah, no. if I have to get put every, I was thinking too competitive. I was like, well, there's lots of dragon types, so I want something like that. I mean, but. I've been thinking that too, but dude, you gotta have a little boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah then, come on, man, I gotta um, have some style. So I've got, oh gosh, <laughs> this is so difficult. Um, I think I'm gonna go. Don't do it to me. I'm uh, I'm debating between two in my head right now. Well, for type's sake, I guess I'll keep my types diversified. I'll go Kyogre. Kyogre? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You took Lugia? I would have chosen Lugia. Because L Lugia is like... Well, yeah, you took freaking Rayquaza, which is like my go-to. Well, yeah. yeah. I love Rayquaza. I think he's... Uh, Kyogre. I like Kyogre, though. He's really cool. And I need like a, I need a water type. I was going to go with something else, but it would keep me like with the same typing. So I kind of want to get diversity a little bit more. Um, so I got three right now. And this leaves me in a, kind of a weird situation because I don't really know what to pick at this point. Um, Sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> what? What? Shaman! <laughs> gonna pick Shaman! By the way, Shaman's the dumb. Sky Shaman's a little bit better, but yeah. that being said, I would Only never. during the daytime. Okay, I am going to go. I want to say another Gen 2 one, but I'm going to refrain. We're going Giratina, baby! It's funny. That's what I was making the decision between. Oh Kyogre, really? Kyogre and Giratina. <laughs> I didn't do Giratina because I already I thought I already have a dragon type. I'll you know get some. G Giratina. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Is like nah, he's dope. I like he's him. He's so cool, dude. He's cool. Literally. So you got Giratina, Lugia, and Suicune, and Suicune. My, my boy. Okay, dude. All right. it's, it, it honestly, my I think my team is is pretty stacked right now, my boy. Yeah, but but you got two classics. You think though? 
I mean, you oh, actually shit. have really good ones. I, I know. I I don't know if I don't know if I should have picked them because I think people are going to say like, "Oh, dude, who's you know, your team?" I want to pick a Gen Five, but I don't like the Gen Five po- know, Pokemon that right? much. Well, I mean, okay, Zekrom's pretty cool, but um, now I'm deciding between two again. But man, well, let's see. I've got both. There's no typing redundancy. You know what? Hit me with a good stuff. Come on, baby. Come on. Let's go, ho. Oh. He got a ho-ho. Let's go, oh, ho-ho. No. Yeah. Give me a fire type. <laughs> and a classic. Slap it. Slap it on. Yeah. I like that. Really? And he won't be weak to ice. Like my uh, dragon type for Quasar. <laughs> like my yeah. dragon type for Quasar. I want to double up on that ice weakness. Well, you picked him. And in the spirit of everything flying, we're going to give me some Zapdos. Uh, wow. Zapdos. I, I, at first I thought, okay, this guy is kind of, this Pokemon's kind of weird. I like that. He's the, eh, he's the second coolest out of the Second uh, the You're going to say Articuno. Actually. Well, yeah, I like Articuno. He's the best. No, dude. Zap- Moltres is a flying chicken. At least we can agree on that. Yes, he is I mean, a flying chicken. He's just a, a flying chicken that's on fire. I think I know what I'm doing next. Oh, no. Okay, am I good to go? I don't know, are you? <laughs> no, like, can I choose? Yes, <laughs> okay. Uh, Eveltal. Eveltal. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. that's a great pick. Yeah, that's what I was deciding between him and Ho. So, uh, so that that's that's your five spot. Yeah. Is, is Evel- you're slapping, you're going to say, put me down for Eveltal. I think so, yeah. Wow. I think so. It's a great, I, I, I do like him. I like yeah. his design. Him, I was looking at him and Articuno, but I like, I don't know. Eve- Eveltal is just so much better than Articuno, too. So oh, yeah. I just give him the edge. They and, both look sick. Zeltal's so. like this dark dragon thing that's just like yeah. really. He's so, all it is. Oh yeah. Which means I get the last pick of the draft. I have all the power. You got everything. Everything's have, left. Everything I ever wanted is right here. I feel pretty happy with what I got oh, though. Spaghetti. Oh, so sweaty. All right. So you got Evel. So you're 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 uh, you're causing me to Kyogre Ho and Eveltal. I have Lugia, Suicune, Giratina, and Zapdos. No, mine's so much better, dude. <laughs> You're just like, oh, mine's better. Mine's so much better. You do have Lugia. Yeah, come That's on. That's about man. it. Suicune's cool, but... Zapdos? Hello? I have Mewtwo and Rayquaza, dude. We can bounce back, fam. We can bounce back. Um, I could go a new generation, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do a callback. We yeah. don't got much left back there. We don't got, we don't got, what do you mean I don't got much left? Well, how, well, how much is back for you? Uh, we're going one, Gen 2 or farther back. Oh, my god! So, I, since you've already picked, I, I'm really split between two right now. Um, I'm going to guess. Go ahead and guess. Come on. So, you're saying Gen 2 back? Gen 2 or farther back. Mew and Entei. Wow. You know me. <laughs> you know me so well. Let's go. <laughs> I... So did I really get that yeah, right? Oh right. my gosh! Because I love Raikou, but his little yes. purple tail thing is kind of weird. But Entei and Mewtwo are the two ones I'm trying That's to figure so out. That's so funny. Entei, Entei, and Mew. I have Mewtwo. You said Mewtwo. <laughs> oh no, you said no. You know what? You what? know what? No, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this way because I'm a baller. I'm a baller, and you're not. Okay. Okay. Freaking. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna go back in, in into Pokemon lore. Okay. I have Giratina. Gosh. It's only appropriate that I slap down freaking Arceus. Okay. We're going to go freaking Arceus as the Pokemon god. If if we were playing like competitive, choosing Arceus was like my second or third choice, but I decided not to. You spell Arceus. R-A-R-C-E-U-S. U-S, yep. Okay. It's freaking, Arceus. It's Arceus. Oh, okay. Sure, bro. Arceus. The way, the way it looks, it's Arceus. At least that's how I'm going to call it. So here's our teams. We have... Uh, for Philip, we have Rayquaza, Mewtwo, Kyogre, Ho-Oh, and Eveltal. For Dope. the winner, we have Lugia, <laughs> Su- Suicune, Zapdos, Giratina. Oh, did I already say that? Lugia, Suicune, Giratina, Zapdos, and Arceus as my fave. Uh, not my fave five. You took a lot of my favorites. I was going to say, yeah, it's not my favorite like, either, yeah. but mine's still better. But if we're doing a draft thing, this is where... So this is Captain Toad's Weekly Picks uh, in the description below, whether it's on Facebook or if it's on YouTube. Either or. We'll, we'll take into account. Uh, <laughs> vote on who would win or who has the better team. Remember, it can be based on looks. It can be based on <laughs> movesets. Yeah, it's not all competitive, competitive like I was thinking. 
Yeah, no. If, if, it was competitive, it'd be, if, if we were serious about competitive, it would be completely different. Yeah, I agree. And so, Except for make, not Mega Rayquaza. Mega Rayquaza. Mm. Uh, or Ancient, whatever, the form. I forgot. They, they made some like thing. It's not a Mega Evolution. It's like Ancient Form. Whatever. Like I don't know. It's getting off yeah. track. I don't know. But um, down below, vote on who has the better team. So what you're going to do is you're going to go down there and you're gonna say Nate's team is the best one. Slap that on. I don't see. I don't have to do talking. I just look. Just this is what <laughs> I'm gonna. Just is. Right, this is what I'm gonna tell you guys to do. Just look at the teams. <laughs> just look at the teams. Come on. And the right desire, the right, the desired outcome will happen. Desired. So. Oh yeah. So you'll vote for me. Just it's all yeah. good. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so um, besides that, um, we will again. Also, we'll have a tournament January 5th, the Christian Challenge Ability at Tempe ASU. Make sure to hit that up. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun, and y'all should be there because we'll be there, and that's more than enough to actually yeah. show up. Uh, other than that, we'll see you in the next one again. The next one, uh, we'll, we'll record shortly after, but it'll be over Mario Kart, uh, kind of the, what you need to look for with the kart, and also the draft. Uh, we got a lot of rules, and we'll talk more about the tournament next one. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. This has been the very first ever Reborn podcast, and we will see you guys later. You guys are amazing. Peace out. I love you. And we'll we'll, we'll, we'll chat later. Take care. Bye.